for long-term um, solution, we need to turn this nuisance into an opportunity and a new blue economy for the Caribbean. This nuisance, referred to by Francisca Elmer, scientific project manager at Sea Fields, is the giant brown blobs taking over beaches and shores, Sargassum CB. It has been close to a decade since excessive Sargassum deposits have caught the attention of the Caribbean. The massive influx of algae has proven to be a headache for hoteliers and a pain for a government who have to use already limited resources to discard it. Sea Fields, a UK-based aquaculture business, has come up with a plan to save the planet and they're going to use this ocean monster, Sargassum seaweed, to do it. Sea Fields researchers and scientists are currently in St. Vincent and the Grenadines conducting trials to grow and cultivate Sargassum. If successful, it will see the implementation of sargassum farms in the Atlantic Ocean where the algae will be harvested and used to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and also supply to businesses to be used in the manufacturing process. It took close to a year for the team in SVG to master the building of the farm as conditions in the ocean are volatile and often worked against them. The first challenge was we wanted a structure that stays open without it being anchored in a lot of places because we also want to be able to have floating farms that float in the open ocean so it has to stay open but that's really difficult if the current goes this way and the wind goes this way so last May when we were here the first time whenever the wind and the currents in the line our farm would collapse on itself and the inside area would become very, very small. So that's when after May, our engineer Nico went back to the drawing board, thought about everything he learned here, a month of building the barrier, seeing the barrier in the water, and came up with a new design to make it more stable. And then we tested that and made little modifications in, in January, February last year. And now we have a farm that's pretty much open as you saw it today at all times. So that was a really big success for us. This time around with Sea Fields, we are conducting what is called a growth trial to assess the growth of the sargassum as it being held in our barrier. A typical day for me, um, Charlie, is um, I'll get up like five in the morning. You know, I'll do my chores, get prepped and then I head to this beach at uh, the base. I have my two boats back there. Use one as a, a motel, an office, and the other one as a, a taxi to take equipment and my fellow workers to and from the barrier. For security purposes, um, I also have other hours that I put in, but I wish not to mention because of security purposes. Maritime environment is actually in my blood. More so, I would um, for the states in my DNA. You know, um, I grew up around the, the sea. My dad, fisherman by profession. Um, you know, my early childhood years, I'm always on boats, I'm always in the water, around nets and stuff. So um, I would have traded 10 years of clerical work from Port Authority to now be around maritime environment. The team spend their days at Mount Wind Beach on the leeward coast, tagging and collecting sargassum, and then it is back to the lab to measure and record data. So I will start by filling up the syringe with some water that we took close to the barrier. And we take 50 milliliters every time. And if there is some water coming up, we just have to push it out. And then we have this filter. It has a width of 0.2 micrometers, so it's really small. And it will filter out every little piece of skin, for example, that we can find in the water. And then we just push it through here. Das musst du dir sagen, ich meine, wir haben es.
And then we just have to make a little line and do it 40 times for two liters. And why we're doing this is because we want to see if our sargassum barrier has an effect on the biodiversity, so on the species that surround the barrier. And this is why we took one sample of the barrier. So we drove with a boat close to it and then just took five liters of water. And we also went to the bay next door to take a little control to in the end see how the differences are and if we can see that there are some, for example, more fish around here and less fish around the other bay. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing. Okay, so here we are at our sargassum paddock that is containing the sargassum. We are doing a growth trial right now. So we are trying to see if it is happy in here and if it's growing. So to see if it, this is a possible way to cultivate sargassum. And every day I'm taking a few samples to check in the lab if it is still um, doing photosynthesis with the uh, oxygen um, respiration and production experiment. So I'm just going to take a few right now. Three pieces of sargassum fluitans. That's one of the species we have here. And I'm going to put them in my bag to take home. But how will the sargassum work to lower carbon emissions and fix the climate change issue affecting the globe? The sargassum farms will be supplied with nutrients from the ocean and as it grows, it will take in CO2 from the atmosphere. Seafield plans to sink bales of the sargassum to the bottom of the ocean, where the CO2 won't easily return to the atmosphere. One of our goals is to, to help with climate change. So by having sargassum and actually taking it away before it beaches or growing it, you can take up CO2 from the air. And instead of it going back up when the sargassum beaches and decomposes, we can either sink the sargassum to the deep sea and lock it in for thousands of years, or we make long lasting products that lock in the CO2 and that way we can take the CO2 out of the atmosphere where of course we have too much right now and we're having a climate that is changing and not to a good, good way. Many businesses have already figured out ways to turn the sargassum mess into money using it in pharmaceutical products as fertilizer and also as an alternative to plastic. With the sargassum farms, 
the supply of sargassum to businesses can become sustainable and keep these businesses afloat during the off season. So of course, we want to decarbonize the fuels in the plastic industry. We want to make them not make them out of fossil fuels anymore, but make them out of natural components. And the sargassum is perfect for that because you don't need to compete with land for agriculture and you can take something that's a nuisance and turn it into a product. But since we've only had this massive sargassum problem for about a decade, all the companies who are making products, they're still in a startup phase. They're still just starting up, building up, um, figuring out the different products, how to make several products out of the sargassum so they can offset the cost of the collection. Um, one of the problems they have is that you never know how much sargassum you get each year. You don't know how much you get each week, each month, each day, and it fluctuates really big. So some days you get a lot, some days you don't get much, and that makes it really difficult to make contracts with big companies. Um, it also makes it difficult to give a stable employment to people. So with the sargassum farm, so being able to farm sargassum, which isn't that easy to do. That's why we're trying to, to figure out how to do it. You can help these companies to give them a bit of a security that on a day when a lot of sargassum arrives, they can, we can dump some of it into the farm. And then on days when no sargassum arrives, you can take from the farm and you can process so that on most days you can process about the same amount and give stable employment and also get those big contracts who, who want to have a huge quantity per year um, and through the farms actually take away a lot more of the wild sargassum and don't put it into landfills but put it into products. Reporting for Searchlight, Christina Smith.